As 2013 comes to an end, we wanted to look back to some of the most inspirational science developments of the year. Joining us now is regular Pulse contributor Carrie Grenz. She's an associate editor with The Scientist, and she reads through hundreds of new studies every week. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Mikan. Kerry, 2013 was a busy, busy year in terms of great discoveries, so I'm sure you had a tough time finding a few to highlight. (laughs) Well, it's hard to pick among your favorites, but one story that I think has ramifications from academic labs to biotech companies to consumers um, was a ruling from the Supreme Court back in June. This was regarding a company called Myriad Genetics, and it had patented two genes involved in breast cancer. And the Supreme Court said you cannot patent those genes. It fell back on the U.S. patent system, uh, which says you cannot patent a discovery from nature. So what does that mean now for science and research? The idea is that, you know, more companies can enter the market sooner, potentially increasing competition and reducing costs. It also means that researchers uh, might have more opportunity to do more research and development on patented genes. Your second pick also has to do with genes with a genetic technique. That's right. So this was a phenomenal year for molecular biology and genetics. And one of my favorite developments is something called CRISPR. It's an acronym. I won't go through it. But essentially, it gives researchers the opportunity to rewrite the genome any way they want. So they can go in to a very specific target in the genome and say, I want to fix this mutation right here, or I want to break the gene apart so that it doesn't work anymore. They can pretty much do whatever they want. This had major developments in 2013. Something like 50 papers, 50 publications came out regarding this CRISPR technique. But how do they repair the gene? Do they put a new piece in? Or or when they rewrite it, how do they do that? So you can introduce the correct DNA. You can allow for the cell's own repair processes to take place and repair it on its own as well. In the case of trying to develop a therapy, you could potentially rewrite a mutation that is causing a disease. And actually, researchers did show that in mice this year. In mice, but not yet in humans. Not in whole humans. No, we're still quite (laughs) a ways from that. But in human cells, they have done it in human cells as well. And I'm going to ask you to make a prediction. Are we going to see a lot more about that in 2014? Oh, absolutely. I think you're going to see CRISPR everywhere. Instead of just being in a few specialty laboratories, I think it's going to be more and more common. And I think companies are going to take advantage of it as well. All right. CRISPR, a term to remember for 2014. And your last pick in terms of inspiring developments has to do with funding for brain research. That's right. So, you know, in the science community and in many other fields, 2013 was a tough year. We had the sequester, we had the government shutdown. And so there's been just a lot of constraint with government funds for basic research. But President Obama gave neuroscience some love this year by announcing what he calls the Brain Initiative. And it's pretty much to advance techniques to understand how the brain works. And what exactly are scientists hoping to gain from that? Sure. So there's a number of different agencies involved. The National Institutes of Health, for example, is dedicating $40 million to the Brain Initiative. And what the folks there want to do is um, look at the individual brain cells, the neurons, and how they talk to one another, and then how all of this chatter connects into the circuitry involved in health and disease. So really going from the basic level of the cell to neural circuitry and how cells talk to one another, and then how that affects our health. Carrie Grenz is an associate editor with The Scientist and a regular contributor to The Pulse. Carrie, thank you so much. Oh, thanks for having me.